Hello and welcome. This is another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our service is a collaboration of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Association uh, and the Digital Pathology Association. My time is covered by the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. And in fact, our cases uh, often come from the uh, Stevenson Cancer Center, our on-campus NIH-designated uh, uh, cancer center. Our case today uh, again comes from gynecologic pathology, a 47-year-old, uh, excuse me, a 74-year-old woman who's noted some abnormal abdominal bleeding and now has a polypoid mass that's uh, detected on transvaginal ultrasound. Uh, hysterectomy ensued. Um, and in the hysterectomy specimen, uh, we can see that here we have myometrium and atrophic endometrium along here with this rather uh, bulky polypoid structure of several centimeters in size. Uh, most of this polyp uh, looks fairly bland with large dilated spaces, uh, typical of an endometrial polyp. Uh, however, uh, on the surface here, we see a characteristic finding of some more condensed, uh, closely packed glands, uh, hyperchromatic uh, tissue areas here, um, and uh, sort of a, a jagged, irregular contour to many of these glandular structures along the surface of the polyp. So this is a uh, typical uh, scenario that uh, may occur in older women uh, with this uh, neoplastic uh, proliferation as part of the polyp. And then the challenge becomes uh, properly classifying it. We see that most of this uh, tumor is uh, forming glands. They're fairly small and jagged glands, as you can see, is some variability in size and shape. Uh, and some of them have uh, necrotic or apoptotic cells uh, in them. Uh, we don't see uh, the typical micropapillary features that we might look for. Um, however, many of these uh, nuclei do appear to be fairly high grade. Um, uh, maybe at least grade two uh, type uh, nuclei, uh, but they appear to be in a sort of endometrioid uh, pattern. And so we might think first of endometrial type adenocarcinoma. Uh, however, in any sort of uh, situation like this, we routinely will evaluate uh, endometrial proliferations, uh, particularly in this age group, uh, for p53 mutations. And as we look around a little bit further, we can see some areas that look maybe a little bit more suspect uh, with higher grade nuclei, such as we see here, and a little bit more irregular, small microscopic glands. So in fact, this lesion uh, is uh, P53 positive, that is, it's P53 mutated, and uh, it's a uh, lesion that we would uh, Uh, think of as uh, within the differential uh, of ser uh, uterine serous carcinoma. So this raises an interesting differential uh, between uh, typical endometrioid uh, type carcinomas and uh, uterine uh, papillary serous carcinoma or endometrial serous carcinoma uh, that uh, is increasingly being defined by the molecular genetic events uh, and in this case, the uh, um, immunohistochemical manifestations of those events, uh, as we see. Now, here's another uh, component to the tumor that has a little bit of a clear cell appearance. And so sometimes clear cell carcinoma enters into the differential. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what the differential is for high-grade endometrial carcinomas. Uh, we've mentioned here endometrial papillary serous carcinoma. Uh, but the granddaddy, of course, would be endometrioid carcinoma, FIGO grade 3, uh, which would be expected to have a glandular component such as what we saw uh, with more than 50% solid uh, differentiation. Now, we didn't see that solid differentiation in, in our current case. And so oftentimes, this is not a differential diagnosis that's difficult because the architecture will keep you from going to FIGO grade 3. Uh, however, another component that, that can be seen is a dedifferentiated or undifferentiated carcinoma, which has uh, a very solid differentiation pattern, high-grade nuclei, and can have many features difficult to distinguish from uh, high-grade serous carcinoma as well as endometrioid FIGO grade 3 carcinoma. 
Clear cell carcinoma is also by definition a high-grade endometrial carcinoma and should be considered, uh, particularly if we have characteristic morphology. It's also of note that not all the areas of clear cell carcinoma will have classic clear cytoplasmic uh, morphology. And so some eosinophilic areas or more solid areas uh, can occasionally be seen in clear cell carcinoma uh, despite the name. And finally, carcinosarcoma may have uh, malignant areas that are very undifferentiated mesenchymal uh, solid areas along with uh, glandular components uh, that may overlap with these other features. So let's just take a look at some of these uh, lesions that enter into the differential. Uh, here is a fragment of uh, uterus, um, and it's uh, quite uh, heterogeneous in terms of pink and blue. Uh, we don't see much in the way of glandular differentiation at all. Uh, however, as we look at higher magnification, we can see that this is uh, certainly a very high-grade neoplasm, and it raises a, a variety of differentials in terms of, is this a carcinoma? Is this uh, some sort of a uh, sarcoma? Uh, is it lymphoma even potentially in our differential? We do see areas of geographic necrosis, uh, and as we look a little closer here, we can see some clustering and nesting of these uh, tumor cells, uh, very high grade uh, appearing nuclei, and an infiltrative pattern in packets and nests that would be more characteristic of uh, carcinoma. Uh, the pattern of uh, necrosis also a little bit more suggestive of that. Uh, here we'll take a look at some of this uh, ne necrotic uh, tumor here. And we can again see a somewhat epithelioid uh, configuration to it. So is this undifferentiated carcinoma, dedifferentiated carcinoma? Is it um, high-grade serous carcinoma with a predominantly solid growth? Uh, is it um, FIGO grade three endometrial adenocarcinoma? Uh, well, this is where immunohistochemistry is going to be able to help us. Uh, when the morphology is so, so close and overlapping as we see in a case like this. There's very little here to suggest even epithelial differentiation, though here we see some clear cells. So again, clear cell enters into the differential uh, with, that are clustered together and maybe within a lymphatic space. Um, and then uh, up here a little further, we can see maybe a little bit more uh, nesting and clustering, a little corded pattern uh, that would be suggestive of uh, carcinoma. So uh, differentiating those three and thinking of stains that may be helpful uh, could be uh, important. Let's look at another example. Uh, this is an example of uh, another endometrioid uh, high-grade carcinoma, this one occurring in the ovary, uh, but still provides some of the uh, flavor for some of the differentiation that can be difficult. Here we can see a very uh, mostly solid tumor. Uh, we can see a few areas that look like they may be uh, uh, gland formation areas like here and so forth, but this is far, far less than greater than 50%. And so this certainly qualifies as a, a, a mostly solid tumor. Uh, here again, the nuclei are fairly high grade. There's not particularly a, a, a pronounced uh, glandular differentiation. Uh, and immunohistochemical stains would be useful to rule out serous carcinoma uh, of the ovary uh, in a case uh, like this, as opposed to endometrioid differentiation. Here's another example, another item in the differential. Uh, here we can see uh, in this curetting specimen, a, a typical gland forming uh, tumor here with uh, actually a fair bit of uh, clear cytoplasm. Uh, may be raising consideration for clear cell carcinoma uh, in some of these areas, uh, and a very papillary type uh, architectural pattern. Looking a little higher, we can see uh, the nuclear grade is uh, sort of intermediate, grade two type nuclei. Um, and we do see this uh, fibrinoid uh, stromal uh, change in the, many of the papillae. Um, however, looking at uh, other areas of this tumor, we can see some papillary areas like here that could raise consideration for papillary serous carcinoma or a mixed serous and, uh, and papillary serous carcinoma. Here we see a little bit of hobnail type formation in these clear cells. Um, but then the kicker is that uh, there's also an area of uh, 
nicely clear-cut solid differentiation here, maybe admixed with a little bit of necrosis and maybe a little squamous differentiation uh, that is very undifferentiated, very high-grade malignant tumor, a lot of uh, tumoral necrosis, uh, and almost uh, with this uh, very uh, sudden onset of uh, uh, squamoid differentiation raises a consideration of a so-called midline nut carcinoma that you might see in the head and neck or the lungs, uh, for example. Uh, so this would be an area of dedifferentiation arising from uh, lower grade carcinoma uh, that is present in these other tissues, as we see here, uh, more typical uh, endometrioid type appearance with probably some admixed uh, serous, uh, maybe even uh, secretory uh, component uh, as we see over here. And then finally, um, let's uh, look at um, a more classic uh, case. Uh, this uh, case of uh, clear cell carcinoma with uh, not a whole lot of solid differentiation, but with also a lot of more endometrioid appearing type glands, uh, not a lot of uh, clearing of the cytoplasm. These are quite eosinophilic in many areas, though we do see some suggestion of uh, clear cytoplasmic change. Uh, and again, a very uh, deeply infiltrative and high-grade tumor. And we'll go over here to the uh, deeper areas to show the more classic uh, endometri or excuse me, serous morphology uh, that I think we can see here. And here we see a nice tubulocystic uh, pattern to this tumor uh, with more characteristic uh, high-grade nuclei uh, and more characteristic uh, clear cytoplasm and sharp cytoplasmic uh, borders uh, between cells uh, that would classify as a nice uh, clear cell carcinoma. And then the final entity that we want to consider in the differential, of course, is uh, carcinosarcoma. Um, and here's a tumor where we can see a large uh, bulky areas of uh, uh, glandular differentiation, uh, somewhat uh, uh, angulated and tubular <clears throat> type of uh, uh, glands. Um, and these also have very high grade nuclei. Um, we might think endometrioid, or we might even consider papillary serous uh, tumor in an area like this uh, with these very high grade uh, nuclei. Uh, but the thing that goes along here is uh, obviously areas of uh, solid differentiation uh, in this tumor. Uh, and here we can see. Uh, perhaps even some uh, heterologous elements as this tumor uh, has a very high grade uh, appearance uh, with these stromal cells with marked atypia, uh, very uh, solid uh, substance and uh, uh, no specific uh, differentiation. I think there was some myoid differentiation in this. So as we uh, contemplate what we're gonna do further, um, let's just talk a little bit about endometrial serous carcinoma. We've mentioned the P53 mutation. Uh, some of these are also found to be associated with BRCA uh, mutations as well. And these tumors often present, as our patient did, with um, uh, a little polyp uh, with perhaps uh, not much invasive disease and uh, a very deep and very, yet very bulky or extensive high stage disease. Uh, HER2 and MSI status can be important to guiding therapy, and so it's important to uh, make sure that we uh, consider evaluating for those as we do the markers. P16 and P53 are important markers in this tumor, uh, very characteristic if they're both positive, uh, strongly positive, mutated status. That's a very strong um, argument for um, endometrial serous carcinoma. They'll usually be negative with uh, hormone markers and with WT1. Uh, vimentin, uh, which more characteristically positive in endometrioid tumors, will not be uh, positive uh, to the same extent. Um, and they're variable in terms of their MSI or mismatch repair defect. Uh, usually that's retained in these tumors. So to compare that uh, with uh, what we might see with some of these other tumors, uh, I'll refer you to this article by many of the leaders in the gynecologic uh, a pathology uh, field uh, on these high-grade endometrial carcinomas uh, published uh, last year. 
um, in the International Journal of Gynecologic Pathology. But essentially, a, a panel of immunohistochemical stains can help sort these out. Uh, P53 is one that we've mentioned. Hormone receptors can often separate endometrial grade 3 from papillary serous. Um, clear cell carcinoma also would usually be positive with napsin A or HNF1B. Uh, those can help sort those things out. When it comes to dedifferentiated and undifferentiated carcinoma, these are very often Pax8 negative and E cadherin negative, which our endometrial tumors would not be. And uh, yet they will have some uh, cytokeratin positivity, some EMA positivity um, as well. And so a, a primary tumor with this undifferentiated morphology uh, that's Pax8 negative, E cadherin negative, probably uh, be classified as undifferentiated carcinoma or dedifferentiated carcinoma if we have a recognized or known uh, low-grade carcinoma associated with it. Carcinosarcoma also is usually p53 mutated and may have variable amounts of any of these other tumors uh, associated with it, uh, but should have mesenchymal elements uh, that are clearly defined as malignant uh, that occupy a greater than one millimeter uh, size uh, of the tumor. So searching for them is important uh, and so forth. Uh, but uh, that usually is not a uh, terribly difficult uh, uh, differential if you recognize the mesenchymal elements uh, and think of that possibility. So uh, that's our discussion for today. This is a challenging and evolving area. Uh, our final sign out diagnosis, endometrial serous carcinoma, previously called uterine papillary serous carcinoma, involving an endometrial polyp. Uh, and occurring uh, and causing her uh, postmenopausal bleeding. I hope that's brought things a little more clearly into focus for you. Thanks for joining me. Uh, please subscribe so you won't miss uh, future uh, uh, additions to our uh, growing library of uh, uh, diagnostic uh, slide review sessions uh, and other materials. And of course, we always welcome your comments. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.